that even mean, Bowers Game Corner? Oh, hi there, YouTube. We're back again today for something very, very special. We're going to be doing right now our Essen Top 10 Games That Are Most Anticipated of 2014 Spiel. Spiel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Essen 2014. Essen, for those of you not in the know, is the biggest gaming convention in all of the world outside of North America. Um, it's in Germany. Tons of people. Tons yeah. of people. Tons of games. Tons of new games. Lots and lots and lots and lots of new games. We sorted through all of them. We picked out our yeah. top tens. Did our best. Yeah. But we could just hold it to ten. We got some honorable mentions, don't we? We do. Uh, I'm going to bring out uh, my first honorable mention. It is uh, Luchador Mexican Wrestling Dice. Uh, this game came out last year. Um, I wasn't aware of that, and so I actually had it pretty high up on my list. Uh, since it's not out this year, I still want to mention it, though. Looks pretty sweet. Dice game. You got Mexican wrestlers. You even get a little wrestling ring. Uh, to toy around with, but yeah, that's my first honorable mention. So I wonder if the expansions are going to be like not Mexican, like it's just going to be more classic. Other, yeah. like uh, sumo Ultimate wrestlers. Warrior, like, uh, well, they can't. They'll have to call. Well, it, you know. Yeah, find their way. it does look very cool though. So I, I would highly recommend checking it out if you're into that sort of thing. It looks really neat. Uh, my first honorable mention is Secret Moon from Kanai Factory. So this is the spiritual successor sequel to Love Letter and Lost Legacy, uh, which are two micro games that I absolutely adore. You know, I always keep them with me. But the, the one that really intrigued me about this is it's five to eight players, which it's like, you know, you get to that point where you get that five player, like, oh, I can teach you guys Love Letter, but I can't play it. Uh, so I'm definitely digging that. Why is it not on my list? Well, because the theme is, it's werewolf-esque, which I enjoy, but the teams are Team Princess versus Team Minister. Dibs on Team Princess. Um, I mean, the theme, <laughs> you know, if it, was a, if it was a theme that drew me in, I would be like, number five with a bullet. Uh, but, but I'm sure it's going to be fantastic. I'm sure it's going to be a big hit at next year's Gen Con at a secret moon from Kanai Factory. Uh, my second honorable mention is going to be a, a double team, if you will. It's the people who have the cojones to make Essen and Essen the Game, Spiel 13. There's two games. There's two. Se those are two separate games. Essen from Luda Creation. Uh, I believe you are going to be a vendor trying to sell your games. And Essen the Game, Spiel 13, you're trying to basically maneuver your way around Essen and get all the, all, the, all the games you want to buy. To make a game, follow through with it, and then take it to Essen. All right, so here's not? my question. It's selling itself. I see it's called Essen the Game Spiel 13. So if this got delayed, would they just change the name? Uh, this, this game probably was supposed I, to come I think you're, you're, you're thinking, you're, those are the negative thoughts. Okay, okay. The positive thoughts are is that this is the first, like, a Madden. Or <laughs> like you're gonna get one every year. Oh wow, that'd be terrible. <laughs> okay, so I will say though that I'm pretty sure one of these is gonna be a Euro games. That's one thing I, we didn't mention the beginning. There's a, there's lots of different kinds of games coming out at Essen. A lot of Euro games, a lot of abstract yeah. games, a lot of kids games. And I don't really have too many Euros on my list. I don't think you do either. Uh, not really. Just no. because I, you know, when I'm looking at these lists, I'm waiting for a theme to just grab me and say, yeah, come here, big daddy. And, and none of that really happens. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of absolutely spectacular... A lot of trains. I mean, we both like Puerto Rico. <laughs> we both like a lot of Euro games, but there's not too many on our list. Uh, my second honorable mention, I have Trains Rising Sun from AEG. Called it. Uh, <laughs> I love Trains. It's a fantastic deck builder. I could eventually possibly see it, you know, usurping Dominion for me just because I like the board. This is going to add more cards. It's going to add more boards. But the big thing is it's going to add a route, uh, a route uh, mechanism Either. similar to Ticket to Ride. And I'm a huge fan of Ticket to Ride. So I'm very excited about Trains Rising Sun from AEG. Now let's get under the meat. Let's get to the top ten, bad boys. All right, number ten, I've got Spyfall. Uh, this is coming from Hobby World. Um, usually I'm not one for bluffing games, uh, but this one has a storytelling ele element uh, that leads to a deduction element uh, where you, if you're the spy, you know, everybody else is going to know what's going on. You're not going to have a clue, and based off of what the other people are saying, you're going to have to fake it. And uh, try and try and get your way past people and make sure that uh, they don't find out that you're the spy. Uh, but it seems like a pretty easy game, uh, pretty quick game, uh, pretty fun. 
Yeah, uh, this one definitely was was probably my short list. You know, I like deduction, I like storytelling, I like bluffing, I like humor. These are four things I like an awful lot. Uh, just didn't make the list, but yeah, it looks like a really fun game. And one thing I want to mention before we get to my number 10, that is if you are a publisher of any of these games and you want to, a reviewer to review it for you, look no further. We will definitely love to check out any of these games. Uh, my number 10 is Raid and Trade. And this is going to be coming to you from, oh, I really should have done this better, Mage Company. This is for three to five players. Uh, it is an exploration, negotiation, secret quest game. And I love secret quests. I love exploration. I love negotiating. And uh, the theme itself is eh, it's World War III. World War III is over. Everybody wants to get in the Golden Cities and blah, 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 blah. I don't really care about that. Uh, but special rules. It's got modular boards. It's got a lot of really cool stuff. Um, it looks like a really solid game to me, one I'd definitely like to check out. Alright, number nine. Uh, I've got Jam Sumo from Cubico Games. Uh, this is a nice, simple game. Uh, you know, you've got a wooden box, a pretty nice wooden box, and you've got it set up with all these dice. You've got, I think, six dice of your color, and you're just basically flicking dice, trying to knock other uh, players' dice off the board and score the highest numbers. And that's about it. You're trying to stay on the board. I think there's another game called Jam where you're, uh, I, I'm not sure. I think it's the opposite, however that may work. I haven't checked into that. But, you know, you're flicking dice. So I can see uh, playing this one is pretty quick, pretty light game. And I imagine if it's being released at Essence, it's probably got pretty nice components. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my number nine is Worsin das Volk. Uh, from Hista Game, and I gotta say, that's Volk. It is for two players. It is a two and a half hour game. While the two players, uh, and it's, the title of it in English is "We Are the People." And I love Twilight Struggle, uh, and since I played Twilight Struggle, I've been looking for another two player game that's lengthy and meaty and just full of history. Because that's one of my favorite things about Twilight Struggle was the first couple of times I played it, just soaking up all the history. But at the same time. I'm not really too much of a war game. I'm not going to shy away from it, but I'm definitely not going to run towards them. This is not a war game. Uh, it's essentially one person is going to take control of East Germany, one person is going to take control of West Germany after the fall of the Berlin Wall, and you're going to be trying to compete to build up your city and make it the best before the other side does. Um, this is one that I worry may not come to America, but I really hope it does if, it, if it's what I'm looking for. I'm is it printed it. in English? Are they doing it in English? I don't know. Don't know? Yeah, a lot of these games, uh, some of the good ones uh, that I found were only in German. So. Some of the bad ones, too. <laughs> I'm sure there's some bad ones, too, yes. But that is Worsin das Volk, my number nine. Uh, number eight, I've got a party game called So Quadro. Party! Uh, from Cranio Creations. Um, this is basically, from what I gathered, a fun scavenger hunt type game where you're going to be you know, flipping over cards and racing to complete the quests, if you will, in the cards, and maybe it says, bring something yellow, and you gotta grab something from the room you're in, so, uh, I just thought it was really neat, it was a neat way to keep a game fresh, is by changing it, depending on where you're playing it. Yeah, this one uh, was actually one that I knocked off my list so we wouldn't have any crossover in our list, but it looked like a really neat uh, family game. It looks like a great kind of game that you could take to like a family get-together, something like that. Not exactly sure what the name is all about, uh, but it seems like a really neat twist on party games. Uh, definitely one that you don't want to play with new people that you're worried might be thieves. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's Not so that kind of party. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so my number eight is Witness from Yastari Games. This is for four players, only for four players, which gets me hesitant. But this is a mystery cooperative game. Uh, it's got to have over 100 cases in the, in the box, and you're going to be trying to solve a mystery together, but there's going to be certain things you can and cannot do. Uh, I really enjoy the artwork. It's got that old-style sort of Adventures of Tintin artwork. This one I do worry about, though, being exclusively four players. I mean, there's so many fantastic games that play four players. But that being said, the artwork sold me, the concept sold me, and over 100 cases sold me. It looks like a really cool game, one that I definitely hope gets sprung over to America because it sounds really intriguing. That's Witness. All right, number seven. Uh, I've got Keep Running from Sprocket Games. Um, in this game, you're basically trying to outrun a bear and or your friends. Uh, so you don't get eaten by said bear. Uh, there's a lot of humor to it, there's a lot of cartoon artwork, and uh, you're dealing with dice and cards. Uh, really my cup of tea. 
Yeah, this one, eh, I'm, I'm tentative on it, but the fact that there's dice and cards, it kind of sells me a little bit. If it was just cards, it was just like, oh, I'm ahead two, oh, you're in three. You know, that, but I like the the dice element. This one, I'm, I'm tentative on. It looks okay. Okay. Uh, my number seven is Blood of the Werewolf from Homo Sapiens Lab, not to be confused with Homosexuals Labs. Two completely different websites. Thanks, Otto. Correct. correct. <laughs> uh, this is for four to nine players. Boom. Instantly intrigues me. It takes you ten minutes, does not have a moderator, and it's another twist on Werewolf, where it's going to have sort of Indian poker rules. We're going to be, you're going to not going to be able to look at your card, but everyone else is going to be looking at your card. Uh, there's going to have mutations and powers and accusations with confidential, uh, confidential markers. It looks really intriguing. Um, definitely one that I imagine is going to be not too expensive either. Probably minimum cards, probably yeah. a small size box. It's definitely one that looks really cool to me because I'm a big fan of Werewolf and Deduction, but it seems like it has a completely different twist. I'm a big uh, Werewolf spectator, so <laughs> this game, uh, yeah, this game seems really interesting for me. I'd like to watch you play this. Oh man, I would love to watch someone else play that game. Hashtag <laughs> Werewolf Spectator. <laughs> All right. It's my new Twitter handle. Number six. Number six. Uh, I've got Body Part from Cocktail Games. Uh, this is another party game. Uh, it's kind of a twist on Twister, uh, pardon the pun. Uh, but you're basically trying to hold, say, this card between your arm and another person's arm. And then this card between maybe, you know, your head, your forehead. Or I, I think they even bring things in from the room. And is that really a pun? A, a twist? Well, when you use the word twist... On t is that on a pun Twister. Though? I think it's just play on words. Is we'll Google. Pun? We'll Google that right. later. Um, but anyways, it's a it's a light party game. Uh, dexterity give you a good excuse to rub against uh, you know your friends, and eh, family. It looks like a good way to get a rash. You know the part of the. The game looks fun to me. It does, but at the same time, when I play party games, I normally I normally play them with kids that I work well, kids that I volunteer with, who are age ten to thirteen. And Small I rashes. And no, and I just <laughs> don't want to be rubbing my body up against stuff. <laughs> like that. like that's gonna look bad. And then like rashes. their parents come in and we're just like rubbing bodies. You know, it's just I don't I don't know. You know, if I were single, if there's this a game, card, then you're right. But I think you're just trying to balance. But you if know. my wife leaves me, I might consider this game. Maybe. Okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, hopefully that doesn't matter. What ladies, number are we on? Well, you ladies uh, ever play body party? <laughs> All right, my number six is The Convicted from Matus Albrecht. This is for one to four players. It was on Kickstarter. The Kickstarter video looked really cool. And you're going to be building a city. You are convicts chucked out into a new world or something like that. Uh, it's got a really cool looking board. Uh, there's solo play, which is something that I'm always a big fan of for a couple different reasons. First, because I love playing solo. And second, <laughs> <laughs> and secondly, because... Uh, Hooray! I won! And but secondly, I'm still alone. because with giant <laughs> games like, for say, Mage Knight, you can learn how to play the game and then teach someone without having to sit there for an hour and change trying to teach the game to someone. It's just a common courtesy kind of thing. Uh, but there's city building, it's got a campaign of 10 matches, which says they're 90 minutes each, probably a lot upon like an hour each, but still, that's still 10 hours of entertainment. Uh, the reason this isn't higher on my list, because this really does grind a lot of my gears <laughs> it doesn't grind my gears is because uh the convicts in the game look completely lame like like they went through all the four convicts or whatever the convicts that were going to be put into the city and i was like mm. don't like the artwork too much aside from the board didn't like the comics but the game itself sounds like it's really really cool checked out the kickstarter looks really awesome that is the convicted from matus all brick my number six all right number five i've got castle crush uh this one is from so so studios uh, you're basically building castles with blocks, and then you're breaking them with wooden hammers. And that's about it. That's all I need to be happy. It's, it's my favorite part of Jenga. Sounds so-so. Was that a <laughs> I think that was fun. Uh, th that one did look pretty neat. Um, it definitely looks more on the family weight side, which yes, is it's yeah. definitely what there, we were Well, there's a lot of that, too, yeah. There's a lot of that in that list. And, I, and I'm... Uh, you know, my son's two, so I'm not really getting too much into the family way yet, whereas yeah, you've got, yeah. you got older. If it, yeah, older if it kids. takes too long, then they lose interest, I lose interest, and next thing you know, we're all laying around eating taquitos. 
It's not where I thought that was going. All right, my number five is Hanabi Pocket from Abacus Spiel. This one's kind of cheating a little bit. This is from Antoine Bowser. Oh. Who, uh, big fan of Antoine Bowser, Seven Wonders, Rampage, uh, Hanabi. He's done a lot of fantastic games. I really enjoy Hanabi. This guy, not so much. Don't worry, he's wrong, though. Uh, I love... This one's red. This one's blue. You weren't supposed to tell me that. Well, now you know. I guess we cheated. Whatever. Whatever. It is a, it's a really fun game, uh, and they're going to compress it. You know, this is... You know, Hanabi is a game that gets played really once every couple months at my house. However, I have a feeling if I have a portable version of it, it's going to get played at least once a month. It's a nice sleek tin. Yes, it's got a nice looking tin. I know some people aren't big on tins, but when it comes to portability and, and you know, rusticness, uh, whoa, that's mm. not the word I went with. <laughs> it looks really cool. Uh, it's much, much smaller, portable tin. Big fan of it. This is one that's probably going to get ported to America. Probably going to be really cheap. That's Hanabi Pocket. Probably will eventually be knocking Hanabi off my shelf. Number four? Absolutely. Number four, I have Sushi Dice from Sit Down. Uh, this is a quick 20-minute dice game with lots of action. You're simultaneously rolling with the person you're playing against. You're trying to get the right ingredients for the sushi rolls you need and mess up other people if you can. Uh, that's uh, about all I've gathered from it. Hooray, right, another sushi game. Quick dice game. already have enough of them. i rather sushi than trains. Tired of I'm tired of sushi. Why can't people cook <laughs> other things? Why can't this be hamburger go? Why hamburger can't this go? be ramen noodle go? I mean, a ramen noodle go. A lot of. You know what? You probably do have a lot of ingredients in your ramen. I do. I put a lot of stuff in there. Okay. That used to be one of my date night go tos when I was broke. You chop it up and like you feed it to him and be like it's actually no, ramen. It's spaghetti, babe. No, but they're like, wow, is this ramen? This tastes really good. I'd be like, yeah. It's my good ramen good. cooking skills. You know what? Whatever. I'm going to pass my ladies. ramen cooking skills on to my son. My number four is Attack On Monster. And this is from Good Game Studios. So you know it's got to be at least good, right? Uh, it's definitely not going to be so-so. This is a bluffing semi-cooperative game for four to ten players, which instantly pew, perks my ears up. Uh, it's going to take you about 30 minutes. I think it is 30 minutes, something like that. Uh, so it's going to be on the lengthier side. But anytime I can get to that 7, 8, 9, 10 play count, and I'm actually dealing with a game that's not a party game, I'm instantly intrigued by that. Uh, this one, essentially, you're going to be fighting a giant monster who is going to be attacking on... I don't know how that works. Uh, but you have two options. Okay. You can either stay and fight, and hopefully if you win, you're going to get points. But if you die, you might lose points. Or you can leave and everyone dies. Uh, so you can essentially have the choice to either fight or be a coward, but obviously if you are a coward and run away and other people stay, then you're not going to get the points. Um, it looks really cool. It looks like a really simple game. I, I think the artwork looks really neat. I hope this one gets ported over to America because right now I'm pretty sure it was in Japanese or something like that, Chinese, something like that. It looked really cool. And that is Attack on Monster from Good Game Studio, my number four. All right, number three, I've got Gods with a, a Z. Uh, this is from Red Glove. Gloves. Um, yeah, <laughs> Gloves. No, probably not. Just just the one, I think. Just the one Red Glove. They lost it. Well, OJ, OJ, didn't he have the other one? I lost my Red Glove. Was that an OJ joke? No, he had a white glove. Yeah, but it was covered in blood, which made it red. Was it black? No, wait. It Michael, was a black glove. Michael Jackson had the white glove. But his glove wasn't red. There's no blood. He didn't he die from an overdose? We are completely okay. off. All right. <laughs> Gods with the Z from Red Glove. Uh, it's one to six players. It's funny. It's colorful. Wait, it's uh, a solo game. A lot of. <laughs> There's a modular board too. Cool. Yeah, those are cool. Um, you're dealing with blasphemy. Uh, gods, followers, uh, humor, funny stuff. Yeah. Is that it? That's, uh, I guess. Yeah. What, what's what the game about? Need? What are you doing? It's about it? gods. We're doing what? Like, just ruining people's days by making it rain? <laughs> you gotta do different stuff. The god stuff? Yeah, I haven't played it, man. I'm excited about it, though. Alright, you just like the Z, don't you? I if this do. were S, you would hate this game. Alright, my number... <laughs> what if I'm so lost? My number three is Historia, which I really need better... Sorry. I actually had a really nice list, and then this it got lost, and so now I have this list. I have Historia from Geochicks.it. 
weird name. It is a, you're going to be guiding a civilization through 12,000 years. You're going to have wars and raids and technology and all that sort of stuff. It's one to six players, which instantly intrigues me. Because, uh, I, like I said, I like solo, and I like it when you get past that five count. You can still have a meteor game, six players. And the thing that I really like and bumped it super high on my list is that there's still going to be wars and raids, but they're what's called non-disruptive. Because uh, if you're like me... And my favorite kind of war. Your significant other gets really ticked off at you when you do stuff to them in games... This one will hopefully negate that problem. Uh, but but I love I love civilization games. I love them a lot. Going through twelve thousand years sounds really cool for me. Going through the different ages, um, really excited about my number three Historia. All right, number two, I've got Grog Island. Uh, this is from Eggert Spiel. Uh, auction mechanics, uh, a lot of dice rolling uh, for that. Uh, it's got a lot of nice cartoony artwork, kind of like Kingdom Rush. Uh, and you're basically a retiring pirate trying to up his stakes and up his investments in this uh, murderous and cantankerous Grog Island. Oh, you are you? You've been waiting to do that. Uh, I didn't want to just interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds, it sounds pretty cool. I like dice rolling and I like uh, auctioning. Auctioning. Those are yeah. two things I really enjoy quite a bit. My number two, I cheated once again. I mish two games together. Not Forgive cool. me. But they're both dice games. Not cool. They're both dice games. a lot games. of dice games. Yeah, yeah, but these are dice games that weren't originally Okay, well, I'm going gonna, gonna to mention real quick uh, Ancient and Terrible Things from Pleasant Company Games. What's it, what, what's it about? Well, I don't want to get into it. It's horror not dice, number. fresh your luck. Yeah, it's horror, horror. That sounds things. awesome. Yeah, what is okay. this? All right, there we go. Squeezing you put that the, in at number two. You put that the two. body rub game up instead <laughs> of horror? All right, my, my number two... Uh, the first game is Nations, the dice game. And Nations is a game that I've never, unfortunately, played. But I've wanted to play it for quite some time. I've seen it played. And this looks like it's going to compress all that civilization goodness down into a 30-minute dice game. Which, if they can successfully do that, is really going to be right up my alley. Because I own uh, quite a few dice games. Wow, how can I not find this? Oh, uh, it's for one to four players, once again solo. Uh, 30 minutes to play, Civilization Dice Game, and it's from Lautpalit.fee. Why do you highlight everything? I don't. You know that defeats the purpose. Of highlighting, it really does. And the thing is, I didn't highlight all the stuff I needed to highlight. <laughs> uh, my other number two, and this one is really excited, and I debated on putting this of my number one. He's I really, a master debater. I really debated putting it on, and that is Pandemic the Cure. This is for two to six players, it's 30 minutes, it's from Z-Man Games, and it's Matt Leacock! This is one I took off my list, because you, you covered it. Matt Leacock is my favorite game designer, hands down. Not even close, uh, nobody comes even close. Uh, and it's going to set up in less than a minute. And when, when they originally pinned that, I was like, really? Is that that big of a deal? And then I started to think about it. It's like you have to set up the epidemic cards. Yeah. you got to figure out how much you're going to do. They got Shuffle them the in right, the right way. you got to put the cubes out there. you got to do everything the right way. It's so tiring. It, well, I wouldn't well, do that. It's still tiring. one of my top five games of all time. But if this can successfully do give you that sort of experience, I'm really all about it. I love Chuck and Dice. I love Pandemic. I love Matt Leacock. Um, I'm interested to see how they cover Pandemic with only a few components. Well, return my calls. <laughs> All right, number one. Uh, my number one is Og Um Og, or Eye for an Eye. Uh, it's by Sphinx uh, Spielverlag. Sphinx, yeah. Sphinx? 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 I've Sphinx Spiel for, Spiel since 84. Sphinx Spielverlag. Exactly. We just call him SS. <laughs> okay, that's... It might be a person. It might be a company. Okay. You don't know what you're saying. Um, <laughs> uh, this is a dice game. It's a funny dice game. Uh, you're basically a street gang, and you were trying to black the eyes of the other uh, gangs before they black yours. Uh, it seemed pretty simple, seemed pretty fast, um, and it also seemed pretty funny. And it, it seemed like a really nice dice game, and the theme, I, I just couldn't, I couldn't help it. I love it. So Eric's number one, a nice game about punching people in the face. I love the diversity of our list. I really yeah. do. When you come to Bowers Game Corner for a top <laughs> ten, you get everything. Uh, my number one is Coop Guatemala 1954. It's pronounced Coop. Whatever, I don't care. And it's from La Mami Games. I'm sure that's pronounced La Mame Games, but I still don't care. I'm going to call it La Mami. 
Uh, and I love Poo. Grandmama. I, I absolutely adore Poo. It's one of my top 20 games of all time. The Coup Reformation and mm-hmm. the Expansion was a game I absolutely love. We try and get out, you know, as many game nights as I possibly can. But what do I hate about Coup? The theme. Oh, we're in the future. We're in a post-apocalyptic side of the future. And people are... Yeah. Yeah, begin the artwork. Blah. I hate the artwork. I understand it is gorgeous, great-looking artwork, but it still looks like crap to me. I, I think it looks terrible. I think it's stupid. I actually like the original artwork a lot better. So I hate the theme. I hate the artwork. This one fixes both those. Well, possibly the theme, uh, because I don't know what Guatemala... I know it's a, it's a country, right? Yes. Stupid American for the win! Game plus. Uh, and, and I don't know what happened in 1954, but hopefully the game will teach me that, because I love the there was a games. coup. But it's two to six players, 15 minutes. <laughs> but the thing that really intrigues me about this game, and I probably should have mentioned this first, is there's going to be 25 different roles. So 25 different actions and counteractions you can take. Uh, which, you know, when I had Coup, I'm happy with the number of actions I have in that game. But this just adding more actions, I'm incredibly excited about. Uh, this is my number one game with a bullet. Coup Guatemala 1954. More powers, characters, cool themes, better artwork. I am super excited for this one, and I hope, I hope, I hope it gets ported over, uh, because I absolutely want to check it out. One thing I do say that mm, it might knock it down for me is it's only six players. With the coup, with the original, I got the expansion, uh, I got all the extra cards they did in the Kickstarter that, that lets you have like 12 players or something crazy like that. Um, but this one only plays six, so I hope they, they do have an expansion that plays it up to 10 or 11 players. But that is my number one, Coup Guatemala 1954, and that is our top 10 of Essen. What did we miss? Post in the comments below. I'm what sure we, there's something. I'm sure there's a lot. And here's yeah. the thing. We, we said that there were so many games. Uh, there really was. I did my list like a week before, a week and a half before Eric did, and there was like three pages that got added to the list from when he did it. And there was yeah. like five so who more knows pages now, there. yeah. And that's 25 games. So that's like 75 new games. It's, uh, it's just bonus. Yeah, and it, honestly, like, I'm looking... Uh, I'm an artwork guy, so artwork's going to catch me. That's going to draw me in. That's going to make me interested. Or humor, you know, that's going to bring me in and, and get me looking at these games. So a lot of mine were, were on that side of it, where some of these other ones, if you were to bring it up and we were to play it, probably a good chance I'll enjoy it but you know it's a it's a lot of content to go through a lot of stuff to look at so check it out and if you are still here and you are going to Essen if you'd be willing to do this for me I would love you forever but if you would buy me a copy of Coup Guatemala bring it back to America and ship it to me I will pay you for the cost of shipping and I will pay you for the game itself because I would love to review it and I will just I will thank you so profusely in that because I, I really want to check that game out and I don't think it's gonna get brought to America I just don't. But anywho, getting off topic. If you enjoyed this content, please be sure to click on the subscribe button down below. Also, if we miss something, or if our lists are stupid, or if you don't like Eric's beard, post in the comments below. Let us know. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube. Leave my beard out of it. (laughs)